This is arc analysis. Uh huh. This is arc analysis. Uh huh. This is arc analysis. Sink. Well, well, well. Sink. Well, well, well. Sink. Volume one. Welcome to Glasgow. That's what it's called. Issues one to five. Published by Comics Tribe, 2018, written by John Leese, drawn by Alex Cormack. So. Glasgow is Scotland, right? Yep. yep. And they made sure to have the. Phonetically, um, like you get the accent in the, the yeah. lettering of the word bubbles. Like, ah, yeah. Yeah. fucking fuck. I like, I like how it's like, they'll have words like, they'll spell Dog D U G. Yeah. You get new Duke. Duke. <laughs> yeah. So you have to read it the way that it would sound. And it's, yeah. It brings that level of charm, even though yeah. this is a massacre of a book. Yeah. This is wild. This is the first five issues in volume one. Um, when I read the first, so there was a lot of. Yeah. How did you find this? That's my first question. And right. are you a psychopath is my second question. I don't remember how I found it. I think I saw the cover and the was appealing and i was like oh i'll check out what like reviews are and people loved it i was like all right well usually it's if someone loves something it's not really like a green light for uh arc analysis but if there's conversation about it then i'm yeah. like I'm not to use it whether it's good or bad as long as there's conversation i'm like i want to talk about this and there's a lot of comments about this so i was like all right and second question are you a psychopath a little bit okay fair but actually it's funny because the first, sorry to cut you, but the first issue I didn't even like. Yeah, you were telling me that, but it builds, it like completely delivers on the second issue. Yeah. And then yeah. by that point, you're, you're hooked for whether or not you want to be a psychopath, sociopath, a watcher, or like in it. Um, this is going to be a hard one to talk about because I want to give everything away. But man, uh, it, in terms of cover art, it's a stark white background with um we'll now find out the name is mr dig right uh, mr dig yeah uh a bloody soaked man uh, military boots kind of ripped jeans uh a jacket zipped and two shovels so funny going back to mystery man they finally found another use for the shovels again and he's wearing a fox mask yeah and, i mean initially i didn't think it was a mask i just thought these were anthropomorphic kind of creatures living in this world but that was my wild imagination going too far uh sync is definitely a descent into a city sink sink hill i yep. think that's what's called yeah yep. that you you can ignore but you can't look away from it's it's like a car crash so i constantly slow down to be like what's really happening here and man it delivered on the brutality the Sink Sink Hill is like worse than Gotham, man. This is like, and there's and and there's no one coming to save them. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like there's no Batman because Mister oh, Diggs not Batman. He's just doing his thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, he's not going out. And, it's it's no rhyme or reason. It's just like yeah. I just happen to be where I am, where I like during this moment. And then again, this is kind of a we we're talking about an anthology comic, right? Each issue kind of stands on its own. The only connecting tissue is they all live in Sink Hill. They all go back to that one sign that shows kind of that yeah, green the, sign that shows a loop. And that, and that blue van, which it started to scare me by the end of certain issues. I was like, good luck. Yeah, and Mr. Dig, he's he's the most recurring character in the book. He's in four issues of the ten. Mm-hmm. Um, four, right? Yeah, he's in four of the, of the ten issues. Nobody else is in it that much. Some are in two. I don't think I, oh maybe three, I think uh, size and three right. Well, but do you count the clowns? Because I guess the clowns are in all of them. I don't count the clowns. All right. <laughs> There's clowns in it, so already. Because <laughs> they're not always in it. The vans in it, but not so much them, right? Yeah, but like that's the Schrodinger's cat. Like, are the clowns in the van? Pretty sure they're always in there. I mean, you oh open yeah, the yeah, doors, yeah. The, the blue vans there, and the once you open the door. The clowns are, and that was that's that's part of what I didn't like about the first. The first issue is just so, like, there's no, there's no loop, there's no warm up. It's just like, no. here you go, this is Saint Kill, have fun. And it's like, there's like what? guys with, there's guys with condoms in their head, 
getting like smoked by a guy with a mask and a shovel. And then there's like a van full of clowns and some guy just getting picked, like just re- like he's going out for a stroll at night and just being harassed. Verbally. Well, like, it's like, he's, what? He's, like, he's leaving the bar. Like it's, it starts off like him just enjoying a night on the town of Glasgow, meets a couple of ladies, chats him up. He's like, all right, I'm just going to walk home. Try to catch cab. Didn't really work out. Keeps walking. And man, that van pulls up and, I think the I think the first sign is that murder bus, right? That comes back too. Oh yeah, bus. oh that he that he can't get into, right? And he's like, why won't he open the door? And you you only get a taste of it, right? Like they only kind of show you a couple of windows when it's open, right? and you don't really know what's going on, but you know he probably didn't have gotten that bus. You get a first interaction with Mister Dig, and you're like, I like this guy because he's kind of the anti-hero of the story. Yeah. But once that van pulls up, like the entire comic. Uh, what's the word I want to use? The entire like makeup of the comic because the paneling changes. Like the artwork gets more frenzy and phonetic and chaotic and in your face, but the actual structure of the pan of the panels breaks down. Like it fades into black. Like there's no longer a separation between each panel. Each page becomes just a blur of like, oh, this dude's gonna get it bad, and you just see little remnants of like things that are happening to him in like a feverishly painful way. Like you yeah. talked about the gas mask that they start using, but you'll see one of the clowns pull up a razor blade. Um, you see the nose and like the nose is its own craziness. Yeah, that's that's that was that was wild, eh? The yeah. So, so basically, in these in this book, there's this, there's this random blue van, in parentheses S van or vans that drive around, and it's just one, right? Or is it multiple? It's multiple. There's a couple. There's a couple. Yeah. There's, there's a couple. couple. They drive around. And they have these like killer clowns in them and they they just body snatch you and they beat you up and they cut your face so you have a big smile then they put this like nose on you that's got like teeth and it bites into your nose and, and at some point they convert you, you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at some point they convert you they have the they have the gas too that they put they on drug your face. you they, they drug you and they kind of convert you into one of them and the, the thing is, there's no rhyme or reason. They're not no. targeting political... Male, female, it, older, it younger. It doesn't matter. It's whoever's on the strip. Yeah. And that's just the agent of chaos. There's actually like a solid storyline of these little lives that are happening in Sink Hill. Yeah. The through line is they all live in Sink Hill. And if you see that van, like you're, you're, you're fucked, essentially. And it's yeah. just crazy. Because reading it, like again, you said, you know, like the first issue, I was already drawn in. As soon as kind of it broke into the crazy clowns so it's like you can't go past like we're past the point of no return I have to yeah i don't know it, i think the just it's that first issue was just like it's i don't know it was like there was no story it was just but that was the whole point of it, right because yeah, you're reading it as a, you're reading it like this is not an issue to issue you got to buy the this whole volume like this whole art and then read it and then the second volume too which will We'll probably cover as well. Yeah, I, mean, only, yeah, I think think we're gonna have to cover that one. Yeah, because only ten in, in total. Anyways, for this one, the first issue, I was kind of like, oh well, this is just kind of gratuitous. Like it's just like there's nothing. There's nothing really here. It's just kind of like there's no blood. story. It's, no. it's all setting and mood and Mister. And, and then the second one is the exact opposite, where it's yeah, just like here's a really cool story of this character. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Sharon. The who's, cleaner. The, who's the cleaner? And yeah, I thought that was a fantastic issue. Yes. I was like, okay, all right, Not, so it's going to be one of these, okay? Because I thought it was. I also didn't realize it was an anthology series. I didn't read much about it before. Yeah, totally. the fun. The fun part of reading these things is is just kind of like, like I said, when I discovering what the world. Is. Yeah, when I pick out things for arc analysis, I'm like, oh, it has a lot of conversation. Okay, so this could be fun to talk about them. I have no idea what it's about. All I see is on the cover is a guy in a fo- in a fox mask, or like you said, an anthropomorph- anthropomorphic fox. Yeah, which would have been fun to do. Right? So yeah. I was like, all right, yeah. So I didn't know it was an anthology series until I got the second issue. I was like, oh, this makes it more interesting. Then the kind of gives more texture to the first issue, and then it goes from there, right? Um, so in this book, in this arc, the first five, we talked about the first one, and the second one is Sharon, who's a cleaner. Who is into it? She's set into an interesting situation when a body she's getting rid of starts to move around. Yeah, <laughs> job's not done. Yeah, job's not done. So she's driving the body home and starts to move around. We don't have to talk about what happens in all these issues. Like we will try not to because excuse me, but I, yeah. I'd like to cover what they're all about just so you get get an idea of um, all these all these people that inhabit this town. Like how did all these people find Sing Hill? Like they yeah. took a specific type of person to be like, here's home for me. 
Yeah, because in the third issue, it's oh, man. another Jeez. another cool character. Because the characters in this really yes. bring it to life. They're really the, the characters that they focus on are really interesting. Like Florence, who's a retired, quote unquote, retired roughneck who has yeah. transitioned, comes back for revenge of, uh, of a dead friend. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and that was cool because it's like yes. all these transphobic people are like people don't understand. He's like these are, like that's such a cool, such an interesting story to tell. Which right. I never, I was like, oh, that's that's the, the cleaner story. We've kind of seen things like that before. I mean, it's in Transporter, basically that. Yeah, and a, but a great intro to what this town oh, is around yeah. every corner, around every door. There's somebody that you don't want to kind of meet because if you meet them, it's probably the last person you're gonna end up seeing. Um, yeah. But each comic issue has the same sort of setup in terms of it's kind of like a bright, shiny day when you first meet the character, a little background of what they do, and then. Again, the page breaks. Essentially, something happens that triggers them. You see the artwork just kind of pop with as much blood as possible. And then it just goes into a different descent in madness, depending yeah. on what that lead character is doing in that article. So talking about, um, not Sharon, what was the uh, issue? Three? Florence? Florence. Florence. Her, her come up, for lack of a better word, good Lord. Yeah. I would love to see that in a movie. Yeah. That's a really cool. That's a very interesting story and angle to to uh, to cover. And I, I I was thinking the same thing. I was like, this would be really really cool. And just the way they drew yeah. her hands, like that alone, which is like, this is not a woman I'd ever want to mess with. Yeah. And her first interactions when she gets in the bar and like the people that knew her and like disrespect her and just like you can see that flip. Yeah. Man. Really, really cool. Uh, in the fourth issue, there's that group of kids. Young team. Cla- oh, yeah, man. who have a classmate go missing. So they skip school one day to go to the speakeasy, which yeah. is kind of like the... Underground bar. Kinda. Yeah, no, yeah, it's well, the speakeasy. It's, speak-easy. it's, like, it's, like, it's the get-together for like anybody who's having a hard time. Yeah. Uh, and they try to kill some clowns because they just assume that the person got kidnapped by clowns. Which uh, seems to be like the entire town understands that there's killer clowns. Yeah. Like if you just get caught up, don't get caught up. Yeah, they know that because there's a gang called the Dickheads, which have they they walk around with condoms on their heads, and they're 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 constantly trying to uh, initiate each other. They have to do like something crazy in order to get into the gang, right? Like yeah, they're always yeah they're trying to do some like crazy shit. Um, so there's them, and then there's like the killer clowns that drive around in the vans, and then there's just like low lives <laughs> as well, right? So it's just like. It's it's worse than Gotham, right? Like, like uh, but these kids go on like a little Captain Planet kind of mission where it's like, <laughs> you know, like let's... Well, I was gonna say I was gonna be like Stand by Me, like they like they, oh, go, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. they go find this and then they find a body and then they find somebody else and then they have to make decisions and like that's like I love that storyline from the cool moment too. where that kid freaked out and it, he saw a clown, yeah, and the page just completely went blood red and like it reminded me of it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah, it reminded me of it. Yeah. That's, and, that's the other one I was thinking of. And then they get pro, like they get proposed a question of like, "Do you want to take this choice because it's going to change your life forever?" And they're like, "No, no." And then ultimately they make a decision, and you 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 kind of see that start to like weigh on their faces. Like everybody in this town is aged ten years, regardless yeah. of what age they actually are, with the decisions and the things that they have to see in yeah. this world. It's brutal. It's brutal. Well, it's like, and then the fifth issue is is about Emma. Whose dog Snowy, a little like uh, uh, what are they called, Pomeranians or whatever? Yeah, that's the, that was like the latest issue. Yeah, but the, but it was very interesting because you get yeah. to see it peel the cover back because her her dog Snowy goes missing, so she reaches out to the criminal underworld to try yeah. and find her way back to her dog. So right away, you can see that this this girl or this young woman has balls of steel. One, two, you actually see that there's a con- like. There's someone in control of this world. Yeah. For the other four issues, you kind of just see anarchist and just craziness, and you have no idea like if it fend for themselves. But there's actually like no, there's order to this world. Right. Uh, there's specific places and people that you can call to keep things in line, which makes me think like that makes me think it's even more crazier because if what's happening at the top level is all these dickheads and psycho clowns, what's beneath the surface is way more sinister. Way more. And you get a piece of that. And you get a name, Cy McCurdy, and he's like this underground like boss right. who who runs he runs the dickheads, right? Like he's he's top of like there's lieutenants, there's like there's a chain of command beneath him, but he's the, the king of the dickheads and 
He, <laughs> what he, a title. <laughs> yeah, the king of the dickheads. And then he kind of – Emma actually finds her way to him when they have – he's an interesting fellow. He's to an say, interesting fellow. To say the least. Yeah, and that was really cool. That to, So in each of these issues, you get five different stories. Um, that are all connected but not really. Loosely, loosely, yeah. I'd say only the – Fifth one has like the happy ending because like what happens with the dog. Yes, but the fifth. That's not even that happy. No, the fifth issue actually ties in together previous characters from the other. A bit, yeah. Which is nice, um, but man, like that blue van. Yeah, at well, it's funny because that's at one point at a certain point I was kind of like the least my least favorite part of this book were the clowns. I was like, this is they're just kind of there. I'm like, I'm more interested in the characters with with faces and names like the clown yeah it's like this looming threat but they're just it's like but it's not even like a looming threat like it's the best version of joker where he's yeah not the, he's not the main character but at any moment like i'm trying to think of a video game i was gonna try to equate it to like the dickheads were putties to the clowns were foot soldiers but that doesn't like that doesn't sum up the sadisticness of these characters the clowns are just really just high on drugs constantly yes and if they catch you rolling you're, like you're dead. If this was a, a 80s kids um, movies, like because we had all those movies that were teaching us lessons, like the clowns would be like, watch out for strangers, stay away from like yeah. vans, like don't go in at night. Like these are the things that they'd be trying to sell hard. This book flips it to like turning off the parental discretion and showing you probably your worst fear what could happen in a van with crazy killer clowns and of them just like stripping you of everything that makes you human and turning you into just this drug blood fueled psychopath. So are these clowns, are they, uh, are they brainwashed or are they just really high? I, and that's the thing I kind of appreciate about this book. I didn't care to know the answer. Yeah. No, I'm just asking your opinion. I'm asking your opinion. What do you think? Because there's a lot of things that this book doesn't answer everything. No, and I think that's part of the charm of this book. I, I agree. It only shows you so much of the door. Like, it doesn't open the door completely. You just get to peer into this world and be like, I've seen enough. I'll never move. It does. I really hope there's no place called Sink Hill in uh, Scotland because yeah. I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. About our hometown. It doesn't go out of its way to explain everything, which some people might find frustrating, but I think it's perfect for this because it leaves it only tells you what you need to know well then, going back sorry going back yeah. to the the charm of the joker because we already brought him up like there was a certain amazement to we had no idea about what this guy's backstory was he was just the agent of chaos he was batman's greatest rival we didn't know what to expect from him and at a certain point writers and comic producers are like we need to know a backstory about this oh, that's guy. so annoying yeah. and that was like we both agree that was probably some of the worst decisions you could make with that character two two of the worst decisions in comics were giving the joker a backstory and giving wolverine a backstory like a definitive backstory i always liked how those two characters kind of stayed Above the fray, they're yeah, they're, and tr- they're and kind, kind of, of legends, mysterious. yeah, yeah and myths, and made them more interesting. But then, of course, they had to give them both backstories because comics, right? So, going back to your your question about the clowns, um, I think someone's in control because sooner or later you have to fill up that van, and I don't think these drug filled clowns are filling up the gas on the van. So, mm. like, I would think somebody has to call the shots on that, but I don't know who would. Who's going to, like, it's who will watch the Watchmen? Who's going to scare these clowns? Like, who's going to keep these guys in order? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't, I don't think there is an order to them, though. I think it's just a bunch of, I think that they're, I think there's something in the nose, personally. Okay. When they get that nose on you. That changes them. I think that kind of infects you or something. That's, that's how I took it. Who's filling the gas tank? That, that could just be like chloroform. No, not the actual drug gas tank. I meant like the car gas tank. Oh yeah, oh, oh the gas tank. Yeah, that's that. But that's why I think there's some sort of order to it because sooner or later they're going to run out of petrol fuel. And yeah, that'd I don't be think... interesting. Maybe maybe they cover that in volume two. I don't know. It'd be interesting to to see how what goes there. But at the same time, they're they're. I mean, they're a central point in the fourth 
and I guess the first issue. Yeah. Uh, but they're not really important to the to. They are. I should say they're not important to Saint Kill because they are. But they're just a looming threat. Like there's yes. something you always have to be careful yeah. of yeah. while you're on your main journey, right? Which is yeah. kind of cool because normally we're just looking for the sub boss, main boss. Yeah. But this is something that like you can't even predict when they're going to show up, when they're going to come. Among with all these other crazy characters that you don't know when they're going to attack, if they're even going to attack, if you can even befriend them. Um, what was your favorite issue out of this run? It's going to be the it's going to be the fourth one. Fourth, because okay. oh, the just, kids, yeah. I just loved how they bonded together and that one because I wasn't expecting that clown scene like right in the middle, and it literally just brought me back to the movie. Um, and I like the the choice that they made. Um, I like I wouldn't take the same choice, but they were kind of pushed into a decision where they're forced to. And there's a bit of mentoring stuff there. Yours? Yeah, we your we didn't. It's funny because we didn't mention he was in that issue until just now. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. trying not to spoil things in <laughs> yeah. here, but. Yeah. That was cool to see him back. Uh, mine would probably be number two, I think. So you really did like uh, Sharon and her? I liked Sharon. I liked her. Because it's a simple story. and it's, a, it's I like very... I like very gray characters. And everybody in this, not everybody, but a lot of people in this book are very gray. She's incredibly gray because she just like, this is my job. Right. But then there's the whole like, what do I do with this this person that's alive? And that's the most noir of all the issues. That's the one. That's yeah. Like, there's like a kind of mystery. There's kind of yeah. a dark sense of something. And there's a bit of a fake out in the like. Yeah. There's there's you know there's, there's a left turn. There's a right turn. Yeah. I really um, like that. I thought it was very well crafted and well written and interesting because it's kind of like you can see both like what do you do? You can do this or you can do that. Or you can do this or you, like. And I know what I would like. You feel like reading this, you're oh, kind of like, I know what I would do. In that circumstance, but again, you don't know. You saying. don't know exactly. Yeah. Um, the artwork is feverish and kind of gnarly in specific places, especially. Gnarly is such a good word for it because, yeah. What they draw and how they draw. But I have to stress the way that they use the color red is so cinematic and so. Uh, what's the word that like punches you in the face because you can't Loud. ignore it? Yeah, like obnoxious. and obnoxious is a great word for it. There, there are certain characters that get painted from head to toe in red, and you can't take their eyes off of it, off of them. So everything happening around them is either happening to them or in cause of it. But then there's certain issues, like the fifth issue, where what's the lead character of the lady that lost her dog again? Emma. The background is just red in the world that she's head entering into, so you can sense danger. So like red is always soaked in. Like, be wary of this, but you can't ignore it. Like, and sooner or later, everybody gets bathed in red, which I just fucking appreciated about this book. Yeah. It's there, no yeah. matter how much you try and fight it, sooner or later, you're going to sink into it. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to get red. You're, you're, it's going to get red. You're going to get red. The yeah. amount of white space they use with the contrast of the red is amazing. Um, again, and they use the full palette. Most of it's muted, especially when the... That dog scene with a uh, king of dickheads, like those are all yeah. brown dogs. But then you see the splash of red for the reason they need to see the splash of red. Amazing. Um, I just it, it it helped draw me into the book even more. So again, I had questions of if I'm a psychopath because how much I loved how everybody looked painted and the ways that they would find a way to explode red. Um, I wish I broke down names. I can't remember what's the lady from this third issue, Florence. Florence and yep. her red dress walking into the bar and giving everyone else kind of a red dress. Man, like, yeah. again, another cinematic. I, I would love to see this in a movie. I don't know how you can make this unless you're Quentin Tarantino. That's the biggest spoiler I can give to it because each each book is kind of a bloodbath. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it, it would be interesting to see stories like this told in different different. Um, formats movies mm -hmm. shows whatever like that because they're i'm constantly reminded of like black mirror and stuff watching this i'm like man this Good is call. like such a or twilight you know twilight zone like it's like there's there are pulls here where it's not futuristic it's not like alt realities but nope. it is anthologies and it's like yeah. this is extremely this and this is extremely this and, this is and you can tell the writer cares about the characters like they're yeah. all three-dimensional you all yeah. believe they Very all exist in this world yeah. the whole thing about uh the four kids. I just love the whole like Jakey and Jakey flips out when one of his friends, so called friends, calls him Jakey again. He's like, "Yeah, you you always call me Jakey. I hate that." And he storms off, and he has to circle back. 
to figure out. Like there's all these like little touch tones that have nothing to do with kind of the main action, but stuff that's going on internally with the character arcs. So I was like, those are small touches that you see a writer appreciates who he's writing and who he's trying to create in this world. And again, this is a world lived in. Um, so much so that I'm afraid of blue bands if I ever see them on the street. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to think of that, too. It's like, oh, shoot, here come the clowns. clowns. Yeah. yeah, how do you stop the clowns? You, do you don't clowns. stop them. You just avoid them. That's the thing. Good Lord. Because they just show up. Anyways, we rate these on a good or bad basis. So boom being good, Bob being bad, and whoosh for what did I just read. Thank, what do you rate it? Easy. Boom. Yeah, it's a boom. boom. It's funny because I, like I said, when I read that first issue, I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna yeah. like this. This is gonna when be just some. It. It's just gonna be some like murder porn book." And it, no, it's anything no, like there's that. some, there's some really well written characters and well thought out ideas here. Quick follow up question: Would you rather see this property as a TV show, movie, or a game? I, w- I, w- I don't think I'd want this as a game. You wouldn't like the map of uh, Sink Hill that they always show, and you have to go to each point. No, I don't. This is a rolling van. I don't know because who do you play as? Like, do you what play as just a, a resident? Do you play as Mister Dig? Yeah, you. I think you get to play as all of because that them. changes. That changes the whole game you, genre, right? I think you have to choose. You have to earn to play as Mister Dig. You may have to defeat Mister Dig at a certain point. Right, right, right. To play as him, you have you have to be a like a civilian and find your way to navigate. You have to earn your chops before you get that. You, you start as one of the kids. You work your way up. Possibly, and just grow. You could pick to be a dickhead, or you could go to See? join the class. You're building it, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I kind of like it as it is. I don't. I don't like. I still don't like it as a game. I don't know. I, I don't know if this could become a movie. It'd be amazing. No, it'd be TV show. show. Yeah, that's but, why the Black Mirror, Black Mirror vibes. It would something. get canceled after the first season. We yep, get ten absolutely. episodes. We'd be so happy and be like, <laughs> ten. Uh, how did that? You get yeah. you get six and that. No, no, I, I, we can pull ten of this. You get one for each of them. Oh no, I'm saying like some company be the, like the you get six. Yeah, the studio, you get six. Listen, we can get on two B with this. You can get yeah, oh, yeah. We can get on a some off brand Indian channel. <laughs> hey, I don't know, man. Like Deadly Class got its first season, and I enjoyed it, but man, did they not like? Nobody knew that show existed. That's, and that's the question. Who could keep the source material this close to the, the book? Because yeah. the book, like any, if you change anything. Well, something like this is easy to kind of make your own stories, though. You have the setting. All you really need is the clowns, Mr. Dig, and the, and the environment. And you can kind of put whoever you want. You want it, right? If the gratuitous violence and satirization and palette of red isn't all over it, it's, it's not true to form. Yeah, that's fair. Check it out.